Hi there, this is Thermal Physics Lesson 2, Thermal Energy uh, Practice Questions, Exam Style. So, first of all, before we start these questions, a bit of a recap, in case you've not just done Lesson 1 previously. So, the equation that you're going to be using is Thermal Energy is equal to mc theta. So, energy is in joules, mass is in kilograms, C is the specific heat capacity, which is in joules per kilogram per degree Celsius or per, uh, per Kelvin. And theta is the change in temperature, and that's degree Celsius or Kelvin. Hopefully that's okay. And then I'm going to give you a couple of specific heat capacities, which I asked you to highlight from a table that were in, highlighted in red from last lesson. But just in case you haven't got them. We'll need the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the specific heat capacity of copper, which is 385 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So you want to make sure you've got these written down. And then we can begin. So let's pause and have a go at these questions, and then I'll take through the answers. So pretty straightforward, question one. So E equals MC theta. Then we just need to put the numbers in. So the mass is 0 0.8. The specific heat capacity of copper is 385. Change in temperature, 70 degrees Celsius. So that gives an energy of 21,560 joules. Question two, how much energy is released? So again, E equals MC theta. So the mass is 2.2 kilograms of water multiplied by 4,200 multiplied by the change in temperature. You could put minus 50. It would give you a negative answer just to say that the energy is being released to the surroundings. But it's not entirely necessary. Change in temperature is 50 which gives a energy, change in energy of 462,000, 462,000 joules. Let's do number three. So number three, calculate the increase in temperature, so it's E equals MC theta yet again. Uh, but we're going to do change increase in temperature, so change in temperature is E divided by MC. And it's just a matter of putting the numbers in. So it's 5,700 joules divided by the mass, which is 1.4 multiplied by a specific heat capacity of copper, 385. So that gives a change in temperature of 10.6 degrees Celsius, or you could put 10.6 Kelvin, either or. Last one, number four. So some water is given 6.3 kilojoules of energy and the temperature rises by 4.2 Kelvin. What is the mass of the water? So it's equals MC theta yet again. We arrange to find mass, so it's energy divided by C theta. So the energy is 6,300 divided by C for water, 4,200 times change in temperature 4.2. So that will give a mass that's equal to 0.36 kilograms. Hopefully they all went okay. Let's try something a little bit trickier. If you like to pause and have a go at this one, then I'll take you through the answer. A tube 1.2 meters long contains 110 grams of lead shot at room temperature. The tube is inverted rapidly 20 times. Each time the lead impacts on the bottom of the tube with no loss of energy to the surroundings. The lead shot is then emptied into a plastic cup. Specific heat capacity of lead is 130 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So there's two questions. Let's do one at, uh, part one first. Calculate the maximum possible temperature rise. So what we need to do is think about what's happening. So we've got the, the lead, which is falling a distance. And then, so we'll have potential energy. And that potential energy is converted into thermal energy. So we're going to do the loss of the GPE and that will be equal to the gain 
in thermal energy. Now in real life there would be losses to the surroundings, but in the question it says to neglect that. So the loss of GPE is MGH equals gain in thermal, thermal energy will be MC theta. So the masses cancel. Maximum possible temperature rise theta is equal to GH over C. So let's put some numbers in. So it's 9.81 multiplied by the height. Now the height is 1.2 meters and 20 times. So that's height of 24 meters in total. Divided by a specific capacity of lead, which is 130. So that gives a maximum temperature change of 1.81 Kelvin. Pretty modest. That answer could also be in degrees Celsius. Let's look at part two then. Explain what would happen if the ledge shot mass was larger. Well, we just did MC theta equals MGH and found that the mass is canceled. So the mass is irrelevant. So what would happen? Nothing. Let's move on. So let's pause and have a go at this one. So again, a tube 1.2 meters long contains 110 grams of lead shot at room temperature. The tube is inverted rapidly. Each time the lead impacts on the bottom of the tube with no loss of energy to the surroundings. Specific heat capacity of lead is 130 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So this time the lead is initially at 20 degrees Celsius. The melting point of lead is 327.5 degrees Celsius. Assuming there is no energy loss to the surroundings, how many times would you have to invert the tube to melt the lead? So again, we've got the loss of gravitational energy equals the gain in thermal energy. So we can write MGH equals MC theta, masses cancel. And this time we're going to look at height. So height is equal to C theta over G. Then we just need to put the right numbers in. So C is 130 multiplied by the change in temperature. So the change in temperature is given by 327.5 minus the 20 degrees. So that's 307.5. Then we need to divide by G, which is simply 9.81. So that gives the total height that the lead must fall through of 4,074.9 meters. So if we divide that by the 1.2 meter long tube, we actually get 3,396 inversions. So quite a lot. Let's move on. So let's look at this one. So if you want to pause and have a go. A gas water heater can raise the temperature of 2.4 kilograms of water by 50 Kelvin in only one minute. Calculate the power of the gas here. So power is work done over time or energy over time. And we know that energy is, well, the thermal energy is MC theta. So we've got MC theta divided by time. So the mass, 2.4 kilograms, multiplied by a specific heat capacity of water, which we've looked at a couple of times already, 4,200, multiplied by the change in temperature, which is 50 Kelvin. Then we need to divide by the time taken. The time taken is one minute, which is 60 seconds. So that gives a power that's equal to 8,400 watts. It's quite a lot. Especially for a household device, which leads into number two. If you try to use an electrical heater in your home with the same performance, what practical difficulty would you face? So let's make some room. So our question two. Well, we've got quite a lot of power, 8,400 watts. And I'm gonna show you something now. So P equals IV or P equals VI, whichever. So power is 8,400. And what I'm going to do is find the current. So the voltage, the maximum voltage that you can use in a home 
from a normal plug, uh, plug supply is 230 volts multiplied by the current. So if we do 8,400 divided by 230, we get 36.5 amps, which is quite a lot considering that the, the maximum that a standard plug in the UK can go to is approximately 13 amps. 13 amps is the, the highest fuse value that we can use as well, if you remember from GCSE. So the practical difficulty is it wouldn't work from a normal plug. We'd have to have a special setup, like you know, like a cooker. Uh, so thicker coaxial uh, copper cables. So it would have to be wired in by a professional for sure. Right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.